All right, y'all, so before we kick things off, bit of a bummer. When I first started the kitchen renovation, I kind of lost all the footage from when I initially started the project and took all the cabinets out. Maybe I missed the memory card or something, but I lost it. But luckily, one cabinet slipped through the cracks. When I was spray painting the first coat on all the cabinets, I noticed this guy didn't get sanded or anything, and I was just trigger happy with the spray gun, so I went and coated it without sanding it or anything. I'll give you guys a little bit of a close up. So with paint, you're gonna see you still get that wood grain that pops out. Um, so that's why it's good to use that thick primer. Gotta fill those voids, make it nice and smooth. Luckily, we got this guy that was uh, left out, fell through the cracks. So we're gonna go ahead, go through that whole process and complete the kitchen. Let's get right into it. So this was the only clip I had of the kitchen before I got started because initially I decided not to bother with trying to record everything, but it changed my mind and this kind of gives you an idea of the space before I got started. So the same story here, before we get to painting, we gotta get these bad boys primed. So we're gonna go ahead and throw two coats of the gripper primer on there to get things rolling. So on to the paint. Now the paint color I chose was the basic ultra pure white from Bear. Now this was in the satin sheen, which is good for kitchens because it makes cleanup and wiping them down nice and easy. So at this point, all the cabinets have been primed on both sides with two coats of primer. Now we're gonna go ahead and sand them down to make them nice and smooth so that when we spray the paints on, it's a smooth finish as well. So instead of buying a bunch of those painter's tripods for all the cabinets, when I spray them, I went ahead and found some extra PVC pipe I had laying around and I just cut that up so that I can use that to lay down these cabinet faces and keep them elevated, which is gonna make it easier to spray them and less contact so that paint won't stick. So the paint sprayer that I ended up going with was the Wagner Control Pro 130. Now this is gonna run you around 220 bucks at Home Depot. And I also got the Wagner spray tent just to keep the overspray contained. Now I would say this paint sprayer was worth every dollar. It made painting the cabinets quick, easy, and I kinda didn't wanna stop using it. So 
So when painting these cabinet faces, I found that it worked well to start the spray off the material and continue that until I was off the other end. Because when you start and stop the sprayer is when it kind of spits up excess paint and that can ruin the smooth finish of the cabinet face. So now that everything is painted, it's time to put things back together and with that comes some new hardware. So I went with these matte black stainless steel cabinet handles and I got these off Amazon for about 30 bucks. <laughs> hmm. So you guys are probably looking at that large cabinet to the right there and wondering why those tiny little pools are on there. But that's the initial holes and they only have one hole to begin with. But those are going to be getting switched out with the full size six inch pull bars. Hey, if you guys are enjoying the video, it'd be much appreciated if you could drop a like. Also, drop a comment down below letting me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what I could have done better. Corrective criticism is much appreciated. And if you have not already, hit that subscribe button. We're going to have plenty of videos coming out with all the renovations I end up doing to the house. So this was another one of those cabinets that only had the single hole on the bottom for a pool. So we put the six inch bar hardware into that initial hole, lined it up to make sure it was nice and straight, and then we just pushed it into place so we could see where that hole needed to be. So then moved it off to the side, drilled that hole, and we could install our hardware. So I'm pretty much the worst person when it comes to picking colors because I just can't make up my mind. But after about an hour of hanging out in Home Depot looking at all the dang on shades of beige they have, I finally came to the decision of going with this Rococo beige. Now this was in an eggshell sheen and I think it really just complements the cabinets and ties in those countertops. Now the other thing that needed to get painted in this kitchen was definitely that pantry door. Now initially it was this cream color, but we're gonna go ahead, take it off, clean it up, and throw some paint on there so it's nice, bright, white, and matches the rest of the kitchen.
So I don't think it looks the best when people run the backsplash from the top of this granite. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out so we can use that whole area for the subway tile. So after you remove that short granite backsplash, you're gonna have some leftover caulk, so just go ahead and scrape that off. And then with any loose drywall, go ahead and scrape that off as well so it's a nice flat surface. Then you can hit it with some surface sealer, seal it up, and patch any holes that were left behind. So while I was laying out the backsplash area, it came to my attention that we had one electrical box that was right in line of where our tile termination was supposed to go. And so I had to end up taking that switch and that box out, cutting a little drywall out to move it over a couple inches so that it would be inside of the backsplash area. And that's just gonna look a whole lot better than running a termination to both ends. It's, that just wouldn't look good. But we patched up the hole made sure the outlet was inside of the backsplash and we'd be good to go. Last thing up in preparation for the backsplash was just to throw some of this bin primer on all of the areas where we had joint compound from patching and leveling off the surface. Mm -hmm. 